Inside most NOS bottles, there is a pickup tube that is molded to a specific angle that allows for maximum flow as the bottle nears empty. Keep in mind that when the NOS label on the bottle is facing up, the pickup tube will be positioned correctly in the lowermost area of the bottle when mounted in its angled brackets. There are many ways you can mount your NOS bottle in your vehicle, but depending on the placement you choose, you will need to follow specific recommendations. These guidelines will ensure that the bottle will be able to pick up nitrous oxide liquefied gas during all operating conditions. In the most basic breakdown, there are four main variations for bottle mounting. The first two are for when you're using angled brackets and will be mounting the bottle horizontally. If you mount the bottle in line with the direction the car will be traveling, the valve must face forward and the bottle label has to be facing up. This position will make sure that as the liquefied nitrous in the bottle runs low and the forward motion of the vehicle keeps the nitrous pooled towards the bottom and rear of the bottle, the angled siphon tube inside will have the best chance of drawing in pure liquefied nitrous. If you want to mount the bottle laterally in any way or perpendicular to the direction the vehicle is traveling, the bottle needs to be rotated in its brackets. A 45 degree angle with the bottle label pointing towards the front of the vehicle is a good position. With the added angle, the siphon tube will be able to pick up the liquid nitrous as the vehicle moves forward, causing the liquid to pool at the rear of the bottle. The other two orientations of bottle mounting are for vertical positions. If you mount the bottle vertically with the valve pointing up, you'll want to position the label of the bottle facing forward in the direction the vehicle will travel. This will make sure that the siphon tube inside will pick up liquid nitrous as the bottle level gets lower and the vehicle motion is forcing the pooling liquid to the lower rear of the bottle. If for some reason you would prefer to mount your bottle in an inverted vertical orientation, you would need to modify the bottle and remove the siphon tube. The bottle would need to be emptied and with the valve open, you would unscrew the main valve from the bottle. This is not easy to do. But when the valve is out, you'll find the siphon tube connected to the inside of the main valve itself. You need to remove the siphon tube from the valve and reinstall the valve in order to mount the bottle in an inverted position. This will ensure that as the bottle empties, liquid nitrous will flow uninterrupted. At this point, you need to consider a critical safety warning. If your bottle is going to be mounted in a hatchback style vehicle or inside the driver compartment of any type of vehicle, the bottle valve must have a blowdown tube installed. If increased pressure causes the safety valve to rupture, the entire driver compartment could fill with a cloud of nitrous oxide that would present a breathing hazard to anyone inside the vehicle. The safety blowdown tube will route the gases out of the vehicle. This will keep any occupants in the vehicle safe from breathing excessive nitrous oxide or from receiving severe frostbite from the super cold temperature of the escaping gas. Now we'll begin the installation process. Once you've chosen your mounting position, you'll want to fix your bottle into place. A good starting point is to put the bottle into its brackets and place it in the proposed destination. You'll want to be sure that the brackets are sitting on solid placements and that the provided mounting holes will be accessible from below or outside the vehicle. Permanently fixing the bottle in place will be at your discretion. 5 sixteenths is the bolt size that we would advise for bottle brackets. Place washers above and below any sheet metal to protect against bolts pulling through the body panels we recommend you put some type of lock washers under the fasteners to keep them from loosening over time. Also, consider the fact that you will repeatedly want to remove the bottle or maybe even the bottle along with its brackets on a regular basis to do the refills. Just be sure to mount the brackets in a place that will leave enough room for sliding the bottle out of permanently mounted standard brackets. If space is tight, consider accessories like hinged brackets that will make the bottle removals easier. The last consideration for mounting the bottle is the travel route of the nitrous line toward the engine compartment. It's pretty simple though, you just need to have enough slack to be able to easily disconnect and then reconnect the bottle during the refill process. Otherwise, the line can be secured all along its path. When everything is set and your bottle is secure, with the siphon tube correctly positioned, you can install the Teflon washer into the bottle adapter and thread it onto the bottle valve. Tighten the nut with a wrench and then thread the bottle end of the high pressure line in by hand to establish a starting point for that hose. 
As you plan a route for the high-pressure nitrous line to travel through the chassis of the vehicle, keep in mind that taking paths through the underside of the vehicle are generally shorter, but require more safety binding and strapping points. In most cases, following the fuel lines along the frame of the vehicle will work best. Paths that send the line through the vehicle interior will often use more hose length because they bend in turn along interior contours. However, internal routing usually requires less securing and or safety strapping, as you'll be able to tuck the hose into crevices and under interior panels or carpeting. Ultimately, you might want to choose a path that allows you to use the included hose length. Again, underside paths following the fuel line are recommended for most applications. Before you run the hose in the interior or along the undercarriage, wrap the end of the hose with a couple layers of plastic wrap or a small plastic bag and secure it in place with a rubber band to keep debris out of the open end of the hose. After the line has been run, excessive hose length can be coiled and easily concealed. However, braided high-pressure hoses can never be cut and shortened because of the carefully machined ends and compression-type connectors. After running the line, if your hose path causes you to end up short of the proposed mounting point for your NOS solenoid, you do have an option. You can purchase a two-foot high-pressure line extension that will finish off the path and still let you retain the longer route that you initially ran the hose along. Now your empty bottle is installed, the nitrous feed line has been run to the engine compartment, so we're ready to move on to the rest of the installation. Remember, right now we're dealing with the plumbing hemisphere of your kit pieces. The next items we'll deal with are the nitrous solenoid, its filter, the high-pressure line that connects the solenoid to the discharge nozzle, and the next item up for install, the discharge nozzle or spray bar itself.